Hi, welcome to another episode of Media Melon. Uh, today we are going to make this, not the blue rig with the wheel on it and the motor on the back, but actually this mechanism. If you can see the wheel rotates and I can actually adjust the speed of it. It's, yeah, it's done using this board and this is what we are going to do today. I designed this schematic in Eagle's CAD soft and uh, took a printout of it. Uh, the link of this schematic is given in the uh, YouTube description, do check it out. I also have the board design which we will talk about later. Uh, so, but this is just for my reference so that I can see it and uh, you know do it in the breadboard. Uh, I already experimented it and that's how I made this board so let's just go ahead and see uh, how we do this. I first fix the voltage regulator. It takes an input voltage of 12 volts on pin 1 and gives an output of 5 volts on pin 3. The middle pin is connected to the ground. Two 10 microfarad smoothing capacitors are used to smooth out the input and the output voltage. To avoid reversing the polarities by mistake, a diode is added. Hero of a circuit, the NE555 timer is set on the breadboard. Two 1 nanofarad capacitors are added. The time taken to charge and discharge these capacitors gives out the interval in the PWM waves. The output MOSFET which does all the weight lifting is added next. It is IRFZ44 N type MOSFET. This type of MOSFET is like a switch. It remains off until you pass a small voltage to close the switch. Pin 1 is the gate which is pulled down by the 100K resistor. The output from the timer chip is connected to the gate which will close the connection between drain and source. Connecting a 100 kilo ohm variable resistor gives us a broad range of values to adjust the speed at which the 1 nanofarad capacitors are charged. In turn, this will decide on the output of the PWM wave. A diode is connected between the gate and the 12 volts. This is to avoid the reverse current in case if you use a motor as the output. Finally, a LED bulb with 220 ohm resistor is connected to see if the circuit is actually on. A motor is connected as the output of the circuit. Once I power on the circuit, I can see the LED on. That's a good sign. Now let me adjust the variable resistor to see if the motor works. Woohoo! It works! Yeah, of course I know it's going to work, but still it's nice to see when your circuit works. I can adjust the speed to make the motor rotate really really slow. This freedom is given by the 100k variable resistor. Let's print out the circuit now using the Eagle CAD software. I have the breadboard design which you can download from the description. I imported the PDF to Photoshop and made three copies of the board. You can see the logo and the text inverted. That's because when you transfer the circuit to the breadboard, it all becomes proper. You can see in this board now. To print the board, you need a photo glossy paper or an art sheet. It's glossy on one side and has a matte finish on the other. Place the glossy side up because I want to print on that side and let's start printing. The print has come beautifully. Time to cut it along the lines so that it fits the board perfectly. Here are the PCBs that we are going to use and here's the pieces cut to match exactly the dimensions. It's a square so you can put it anywhere you want. 
Now, if you see the PCB, it's, uh, it's although it looks shiny and everything, you have problems and you have a lot of marks and everything over here. So it's time to clean this. Only after you clean it, you can actually stick this on it and iron it. So apply some heat so that the ink melts and transfers into the copper clad. To do that, I'm using a normal scrubber, a scratch pad. It's pretty rough. Uh, make sure that you can you can either use uh, the steel wool one or this one. And time to do a lot of sanding. Make sure you start from the edges and work your way in. This way, the entire surface will be clean. Make sure to reflect some light and check if you have evenly removed the oxidation. Wipe off the copper dust and clean the boats thoroughly. This is the box in which I mix my ferric chloride. It's a very messy process as you can see how the box turns out so let's keep it this is the PCB etching powder that I get and as you can see it reads ferric chloride don't get this stuff in your hand so be careful when you unpack it and pour it out Empty the entire package into the container. I have two normal PCB sticks. It's better to work with plastic than any metal. I'm just dissolving it. I can uh, actually get the fumes and this is pretty hot right now. Don't try to touch it or anything. Set it aside for all the fumes to go away. Now let's transfer the donor ink to the copper clads. We have three, good. And we have our three papers. Oh, one thing to remember, you have, should have a mug of water, a kettle of water, because the moment you finish you think that this is done, it has to go inside this. So, let's line it up. Hold it if you want it. Again, start from the edges. Set the temperature to the maximum. Apply some pressure when applying heat. Only then, the melted ink will get stuck to the copper coating. Do this for at least 2 minutes depending upon your PCB size. cool down there for some time all right it's come as you can see it's entirely cracks one which is <coughs> peel this off That's a good transfer. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. The details are transferred really good. So that's a success. Here are all the three boards that I've done. By the way, you see this one is grey color because it's been drying and uh, this one is half. This, this part is dried and this part is not. And this one is the latest one. So this board is perfect and this board is perfect. But here is a problem. Take a fine tip marker, preferably black and join the connections.
Open the set aside ferric chloride solution and drop the three boards. I'm making sure that each is not overlapping the other. The moment I drop the board, you can see it is corroding the exposed copper areas. Time to relax now. Occasionally stir and check the boards. Mine took about one and a half hours. Remove the board when you are sure that all the exposed copper is dissolved. Take the board and drop it into water immediately. This removes excess ferric chloride. Take it to the wash basin and rinse the boards with water thoroughly. Ferric chloride can stick to the container, so wash everything with lots of water until you are sure. Take the scrubber again and remove the toner ink. That way we expose the copper under the ink so that we can solder the parts. It's so shiny. Apply flux to the board and start soldering the parts. Once I have soldered the parts, it's time to connect the motor and check it. Bummer, sometimes you need a third eye. Hmm, I forgot to add the timer chip. And sure enough, it works, yay! A working piece of bead that I can use on my LED strips. That's a good addition to my list. Why don't I test it with some LED strips? Red, pretty. You can see the PWing of the light when I make it really, really dim. So there you have it, a simple PWM wave generator using a, any triple five timer. Now I have these three uh, boards which I uh, made during this video and I would like to give it away. Please follow me on Twitter at uh, Media Milan, that is M-E-D-I-A-M-I-L-A-M and I will announce the winner there. Also check out this video if you would like to see how I build this DIY LED video light source for just 700 bucks which is super easy. If you have liked this uh, video, please give it a thumbs up, follow me on Twitter and I'm on Facebook as well. Subscribe to this channel and until next week, happy learning!